Good morning and welcome to my studio again. Um, today we're going to look at the work of August Mack. I think I call him August Mack, um, who was a German expressionist painter, painting in the sort of early years of the last century. Um, he worked with high key colours, as most of them did. Um, he was a typical expressionist painter. Um, and he also was interested in, in fragmenta fragmentation of the surface of the picture, as in grids. His, he didn't have any kind of sad element to his work. There wasn't a message, no politics. He was just a painter, painter. Um, he was, it was typically had a, people in his pictures, but he did use a lot of other uh, subject matters. Um, and today we're going to look at um, buildings and the city. So we'll move on. So as I said in my introduction, we're going to uh, look at the art and the paintings of um, August Mack um, and try to use some of the elements of his pictures. We're not going to imitate him as such, but we're going to look at different elements about the way he painted. Um, so this is a, a, a typical picture of his, although he does change quite a lot through the years. This is the, the period of time that we're we're going to be looking at and thinking about. Um, he did put lots of figures in his pictures. We're not going to put figures in, but it's got lots of elements of his work in terms of colour, in terms of um, sort of shading um, and and abstraction as well. So um, that's the that's going to be the idea. And we're looking at buildings and um, the city. I've tried to summarise some of the elements of his painting that we're going to look at um, just very briefly and not in any great um, detail, but he used high key colours, which means that he had uh, a lot of pigment content into his uh, into his colours. If it was red, there was a lot of red. If there was blue, there was a lot of blue, etc. They weren't neutralised as such. Um, and also tints of colours. I noticed that he used colours where he added white, and that's called a tint. Um, he simplified shapes uh, of everything really and sort of flattened them out uh, m marginally really. Um, sometimes the images were opaque, sometimes transparent. So the way that he used his paint and, and the way he used his brush is kind of fairly um, important. Uh, and he blended colours a lot. So we'll look at that when we're actually uh, painting. Um, and the last thing is I noticed lots of contrast of light and dark. Uh, so onwards and upwards. I was thinking through the materials that we were going to use um, and I thought we'd sort of concentrate, let the acrylic inks like these be an important, um, certainly an important beginning. We're going to use these Posca pens, acrylic pens, um, and also acrylic acrylic. So um, we've got a, a good variety and I think it'll be a different, slightly different kind of process using these um, these materials. Um, so uh, as you can see from <clears throat> from this, I've found a picture of, I found a picture that was similar in a way to the kind of France Mark pictures. It's not a city one, although I did, although you could do a city quite happily, do London or whatever. Um, and I wanted a, sh a pathway that led into the picture. So it's a good composition. The photo is a good composition to use. And I've printed it out in black and white because I want to just make my own colours up. So um, moving on, this is the, um, the drawing that I did initially. So again, very simplified. I haven't got lots of details. I can't even see the details there really. Um, <clears throat> but I've, I've literally kind of drawn it very kind of uh, boldly, if you like, so that I know what the main shapes are. And this is the painting that I'm going to begin work on. got lots of brushes and lots of colour and uh, lots of water. That's what we're going to need to begin with. Here's the same drawing <coughs> drawn out again. Started to use the acrylic inks and I'm going to use the acrylic inks. I'll show you, but it's a little bit kind of, I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about some of it running. It's a little bit watercolory. Just a nice way to begin and to get the main colours down that I want. So um, I've, I've chosen colours which are um, my, my choice of colours. I haven't really, well, I don't know the colours anymore because I haven't got the, the photo um, in colour. But, so I'm just gonna 
use these lovely high key colours and putting the colour down and then making sure it's quite diluted and also sort of painting in whole shapes. So up here I'm going to try to um, uh, let, the, let the paint be a little bit kind of um, itself in a funny sort of way. Um, I think I like the red for this roof here. So again, I'm and using water, using the, the the ink like watercolor actually, um, which is nice. So you put a you put a bit of color on, and then you take a bit of water, and you wet it down. So you wet it literally down to the edge, and you get a lovely watery mark. And it's it's a nice kind of gentle way to get uh, get the picture started. So I'm going to get some of these in. A um, bit of yellow maybe for here. Again, if it's running, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just, it's just getting rid of the white, but in a nice kind of painty kind of way. So play around with the acrylic inks and, and see how, what they do, because they're, they're really a, a more kind of um, uh, friendly form of watercolour in some ways. They're much more friendly to use in general. So I'm putting down some of the foliage colours. He used these kind of very high key, slightly unrealistic colours. Um, although a lot of sort of it feels they feel a little bit realistic as well. So keeping on building up my watercolour, my acrylic ink water stroke watercolour um, shapes and so on. And see what other colours I want to do. I can use a yellow here maybe. Again, I'm I sort of I have used I have looked at his colours and tried to sort of imitate them a bit because um uh, then we then we're really kind of learning from him as well. Actually, lots of primary and secondary colours here, as you can see. So one more, just use a try to use a different green. I think here, mix a green with a tiny bit of red, so I can neutralise it slightly. So that's a little bit neutral. Again, it's your choice. And when I show you the one that I painted earlier, you'll see that it's slightly different, and that's absolutely fine as well. Um, and I'm going to just put in a little bit of the sea colour. So I'm choosing a, a sort of an orangey colour, I think. I noticed that he did use orange for his pathways quite a lot. So, oh, no, I found the... <laughs> Actually, I should really be doing this, the sea, which is I'm going to use a sort of a more... Um, a nice kind of watery blue. So again, just putting them down, putting colour down and allowing it to run a little bit and then adding, letting the, the colours kind of run down almost on their own. You're sort of encouraging them. So we'll move on to the next stage uh, in a moment. So here's the one I did earlier with all the different uh, watercolour -y acrylic ink marks we're going to probably lose quite a lot of those that's just the name of what we're trying to do the name of the game but I'm going to sort of start th in this section I'm going to start building up the colors both with acrylic inks that are sort of going to be transparenty and uh, with acrylic acrylics and also with my Posca pens so I'm going to just put down start putting down layers of color again so we're building it up acrylics are friendly so you can you can always kind of get colour, you can always get shapes back by painting acrylic, acrylic, acrylic over the top. Um, and then something for the for the sea. Um, I think a bit more of a royally kind of blue, get a little bit of red in there. <coughs> Sorry, I know my, my, my voice drifts off a bit. I'm trying to remember not to let it do that. Um, Okay, so just a little bit of slightly, very slightly different uh, blue. Again, I'm keeping it fairly light. I'm building up because we're going to be able to, um, you know, work in a, in a sort of a more specific way um, later on in this bit and also later on in general. So I'm building up. Don't get too fond of this watercolour effect. I already am. 
but um, because you can always do a, a watery version of it as well but um, I'm just you can see how you can see the color coming through it's quite nice and I think the colors will be evident but we're looking for a more kind of solid effect um, as I say it's just a way of getting getting started um, and I'm going to now use it my my pens um, I'm going to use uh, my red pen here uh, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to build up these colors so use your, your pens put the color in you have to work quite fast because they do they do um, dry quite quickly and then soften them so this is quite nice because you have a lot of control so I'm keeping on working this way with them and taking your brush and softening them so you get a nice painty effect without all the kind of pop with a more control with with a nib if you see what I mean rather than just um, rather than trying to use paint on on its own again I'm going to build that up here and you can just soften away so you need plenty of tools you need plenty of brushes to work with um, and now I'm going to use my orange so I think this is going to be an orange roof so again remember that sorry I think I'm going to be jogging the table a little bit but I have to get the colour out that's not very good is it I'll use this one it's a little bit more of a yellow orange a yellow yellow really um, that will all be resolved later well, I've got red on my brush here so this is all kind of building it up quite sort of nice and lightly um, on this side we can also use I can use a bit more acrylic ink so I mix up a bit more of my nice orange and then just putting on color and now this is a way to sort of blend with your um, with your paint as opposed to the pens you can sort of let the water pull the shape down just with water and kind of makes a nice kind of soft beginning um, the trees I'm going to have a look at is to um, use my acrylic um, my uh, Posca pens again so I'm going to put some shapes in he used to um, put in he used to invent or well, we'd make leaf shapes quite sort of um, uh, simplified if you like so again putting on color softening away bit more softening around the leaf shapes because I'm going to deal with those later um, and again you can paint into it wet so you've got it's quite this is quite nice you can really kind of enjoy it's worth having a few different colors as well um, and around here going around the edge of my drawn in leaves there and maybe maybe using a bit of acrylic uh, ink to put another bird another bit of the um, the foliage both uh, here and there and then again on the other side sort of building it up and building so again we'll be building it up more and losing some of the watery effects but it's it's a nice way to work and actually the nice what I really did enjoy doing was actually using the acrylic pens as um as a flatter shape um, so where I've got the yellow oh my yellow where I've got the yellow of the house oops again it, it is paint in there so in a way you're you're sort of doing yourself a bit of a favor really by using them and but what you don't want we're not sort of coloring in so watch out that you don't fall into that trap of coloring in um, and again using a bit of um, more color on here and you can have your wet water down and it these that's what's so great about these acrylic pens they're you know you can use them and they're very kind of compatible with ordinary paints which other pens are really not um, and sort of really kind of working into areas to show a sense of uh, of, of, of form if you like a sense of three dimensions it's we are going to we are going to look at that sense of three dimensions by using looking at lights and darks as well because remember I said to you that um, he definitely liked that contrast um, and I don't know just because I like purple that's going on there 
another little softening away it may go it may may it may leave us you know what i'm like with my demonstrations it starts off in one thing and turns into something else so nearly done this stage um, and I think there was another one here that's not very obvious. Um, so again, that's we haven't gone into the acrylic acrylics yet. Um, we're going to, I'm just going to do one little bit of acrylic acrylics just to get us started for the next phase. So you can see that you start to build the opacity really, you know, this is that they are opaque. They're very different to the acrylic inks. So we'll move on to the next stage and um, see what we can do with that. <laughs> 